Ladies and gentlemen, the Zario ADS play. How you guys doing? And I want to talk to you guys about something. Of course, you guys see it in the title before I even say anything. But I have a question. A question. But before I do that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe for more of these videos. Enjoy the video. Respond to the video. And this video is basically to, to open up some discussion amongst us fighting gamers. You know, I just finished off my pack of Reese's Minis peanut butter cups and I uh, kind of wish I had more of these right now because they help me think you know some good stuff right here um, <laughs> but yeah have fighting games become too beginner friendly as I'm sitting here outside on this beautiful day weather's kind of cold but I'm in my socks and my shorts hate if you want let's continue let me put my phone down because I'm going to need both my hands to do hand gestures and everything like that. So take a look at the car and my orange juice, so I, if you don't mind. Uh, let me try to scoop that up. There we go, right there. Boom. Go and have a look at that 59 fluid ounces of goodness right there. But, um, yeah. How fighting games become too beginner friendly these days? Now, for the entirety of this video, I'm going to be speaking from two well i'm going to be speaking from the idea of common sense and for those of you who remember that i used to play Yu-Gi-Oh on this channel i kind of used the same analogy when i was into that uh into that card game pretty heavy but this can be applied to nearly every video game card game that has a competitive scene under the umbrella of common sense, you have these two ideals. You have these two realms. You have these two identities. You have the common sense of business, and then you have the common sense of competition. And oftentimes, these two ideals won't be able to coexist. And... To start off, I would like to go to a game that released, I want to say, a year ago. I really should have looked up when this game came out. I don't know if it came out in 2016, which I think it did, or it came early 2017. But King of Fighters 14, because this was the first game, in my opinion, I could be wrong. And again, this is why it's open for discussion. One of you guys, uh, please uh, correct me if I'm mistaken. But King of Fighters 14 was the first game, or rather, it was the first game that I seen. Airplane flying over. It's flying over. I can't get a good look at it, but yeah. Um, King of Fighters 14 was the first game that I seen be beginner friendly now when I say beginner friendly you have to understand what I mean I'm not talking about somebody that's just picking up a fighting game for the first time or they're just now playing this fighting game for the first time but they played other fighting games I'm talking about when you look at the way companies have been I would say more recently in the past few years it hasn't been that long but I'm pretty sure they've been thinking about it for a long time, but they, it, it, from what from what I've seen, they haven't really tried to implement it until around the time I would say King of Fighters 14 came out, because this is the first game I see do what I'm finna uh, explain. Um, you know, the the gaming companies have always tried to find ways to get the the non hardcore gamer into their games. And when I say the non-hardcore gamer, I'm talking about the people who will only play mobile games like Candy Crush, uh, Soda Crush, um, games like Temple Run. Uh, let's see what else. Um, uh, video games like Cooking Mama. Um, you know, like the, the weirdos that may play even video games like, you know, something like... Uh, I'm trying to think of one that people would normally play. Uh, I don't know, maybe Barbie's Dream House. I'll say that. Like, maybe Barbie's Dream House. 
And um, cops chasing somebody on the street. You have to meet so well. But yeah, video games like that, you know, you, we have to take it back to the 90s. And no, this isn't going to be one of those 90s, oh, things and how they used to be, you know, poor man, you know, trying to relive the golden age. No, this, this, this is not that. This is just taking a look at how video games have changed and open up discussion. Is this a good thing or a bad thing, basically? But, um... Video games that people wouldn't normally play, companies I would say for the last few years, as, as far as it being visible, have been trying to get non-hardcore fans of their games to join them. And the one thing, at least from my eyes and ears, from what I can tell, it's, it's always been a thing of intimidation with them. You know, what can I do to get good at this game? What can I do to be good? You know, because I see the guys at the tournaments. I see the guys at the, like the, at the family gatherings, at the house gatherings, and things like that. And they're playing this game at such an interesting and competitive level. I can't do that. I can't do that. And, and when people have that mentality of something, oftentimes they'll back up from it before it even, uh, before they even give it a chance. Uh... So there's always going to be that sense of intimidation that scares people away. And video game companies have always wanted to know, well, if I can simplify this game, will that make it easier for these people to want to join it? And thus giving, my set, giving me a sale, thus increasing the profit that I make, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, somebody just pulled up. But yeah, again, it's always going to be the, the battle of the common sense of business versus the common sense of, uh, of competition. Sorry, I got interrupted. But um, but yeah, King of Fighters 14 was the first game I've seen have easy mode combos. Now, for those of you who don't understand what an easy mode combo is, I'm talking about push one button and a combo comes out. And this is why I brought up King of, King of Fighters 14, uh, 14 first. Because I don't, I haven't played between King of Fighters. I would say 2000. I'm not talking about the ones that were on the PS2. King of Fighters, when it transferred from like a 2D fighting game and went into like that 3D, I dabbled in Maximum Impact, and I think it was like Maximum Impact 2. I dabbled in those two games, but I didn't play them seriously. It's, it's like I tried it out, and I didn't really like them too much. It didn't feel like a King of Fighters game. It felt like they were trying to make, like, a Tekken game with King of Fighters. You know what I mean? Like, like that was, like, the first real attempt at trying to make Tekken characters in the 3D. And it was, like, a failed experiment. It was okay. It wasn't as bad as people try to make it out to be. But it wasn't, you know, the right thing to do at that time. But I don't remember those two games having any type of easy mode combos to where you could just push one button and then a full combo comes out ending into like this super move and that was like the beginning of the beginner friendly era in which we are only like two years into if we want to call it the beginner friendly era of, uh, of, of fighting games <laughs> but um but yeah it goes back to the common sense of business versus the common sense of competition you know when you look at the common sense of of business Matter of fact, I'm going to get into that uh, a little later on in the video after I finish up my thoughts on um, these uh, these games and this uh, this topic. Um, yeah, King of Fighters 14 was the first game I seen have one button push combos. I'm talking about a full combo, but just pressing one button. <gasps> and it's sad to see a competitive game have those type of even though the people who are using the easy mode combos they'll probably never get into like the competitive scene regardless if they know how to and they just don't or they don't know how to it's like to take a game that requires a level of skill and to try to close that skill gap or, or rather to try to shorten that skill gap between the skilled gamers and the non-skilled gamers when it comes to fighting games um it's 
always been a company's, as far as the common sense of business, in the best interest of the company to try to shorten that skill gap as much as possible without it being so small that somebody who just picked the game up yesterday can beat somebody who's been playing the game for like 10 years or playing that series for like 10 years plus, you know, it shouldn't be like that. If, if I'm good at this game, right, there's no way that somebody that just picked up a fighting game for the first time should be able to beat me, you know, hands down, even on a bad day. But it's getting to that point where now they are short, they are shortening the skill, skill gap and making it smaller to where other people that just picked the game up like two minutes ago, I mean, first time playing a fighting game ever, don't even play fighting games like that. You know, as soon as they get finished that, they're going back and play Candy Crush. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's what they're good at. You know, these are the guys that's good at Tetris, you know, if that. But, um, but yeah, as far as, like, competitive fighting games, they never really... Guys like that never really were supposed to be able to beat the guys or even get close to beating the guys that, um are skilled at the game. The second game that I noticed have this uh, this feature, I want to say, is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Because I don't think Marvel vs. I didn't play Marvel vs. Capcom 3, nor Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, because those games were shit. But, um, <laughs> I didn't see... Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite have the one button push combos. If they did, somebody let me know. But if not, then I, I think the, the the first game in the Marvel vs. Capcom series that had those one button push combos um, was Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, you know, which recently released this year. Uh, you know, and that kind of blew my mind. And of course, this being, you gotta understand the, 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 the point of view that I'm looking at it from. I'm looking at it from you know, me being a consumer, I can't look at it from the, even though I can, I'm, I may understand it, I still can't look at it from the common sense of, you know, business, because I'm the consumer. My job is to play the, my uh, duty is to play the game, you know, and, and to be very good at it. So that involves the common sense of competition, you know, because you want, even though you may not be in like the big tournament scene or, or even the minor tournament scene, you still want to play against somebody who, you know, is going to give you, like, a run for your money. You know, this is going to be a good match. You don't want to be beating up on everybody that you know you can beat up on because then it becomes boring, it becomes unfulfilling, and you may even lose interest in the game at that point if nobody else is on your level. You know what I mean? So you always want competition. As a consumer, that's why we buy fighting games. Um, I would assume that's why anybody would buy any video game that has a competitive scene. Trading card games, not so much. You know, being somebody that used to play Yu-Gi-Oh, there's no such thing as skill in a card game like Yu-Gi-Oh. Literally. I used to fight against that. I even have videos in my Yu-Gi-Oh 101 um, <clears throat> uh, discussion series that is still up on my channel. You just got to search for it. I don't have it up uh, featured on my channel. But I used to talk about this a lot, and it, it kind of transfers over to what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm speaking on in this video. Um... Yu-Gi-Oh! is a card game that doesn't involve skill. You know, I fought against that. I thought, you know, there's skill in it. But 90% of the time, that game is purely based on luck. You getting what you need in order to respond to your opponent. Now, you can shorten, you can widen that gap of luck and get search cards and things like that. It's just based on luck, really. Because um, nobody is really skillful in Yu-Gi-Oh! We can't even count that. It's just bullshit. But f with a fighting game, you know, you actually have to work at getting to know the characters that you're playing. You know, it's it's crazy. And like I was saying before, before I got sidetracked, you know, for somebody that's looking at this from the perspective of somebody who's been playing games since the arcade, you know, era of, uh, you know, you having to go in with only like a handful of quarters to the arcade machine and 
back where I was doing it, I don't know about anywhere else, but you couldn't even step up to the to the controls and be taken seriously unless people knew you had some degree of skill. You know, even if you lost, people can see, okay, he's he's pretty nice. He gave the top guy at the arcade a run for his money. He's somebody that can actually do something. You know, just show that you have the skill. And I guess you could say it's all about respect for me and guys that think like me that grew up during that time. It's more so about us uh, seeing it from the common sense of competition because we're never going to really uh, like it from the common sense of business. Because nobody wants a fighting game that anybody could just pick up and just learn in like two seconds flat from them pushing one button and doing easy mode combos. That's never going to be a, like a thing with us. You know, it's always going to get looked down upon. So, and we don't want to be the, that person that is looked down upon. You know, we want to be the people that when people see us, they're like, oh, hey, that's that guy that used to play this character in this fighting game. Oh, he's a beast, man. Hey, you two should, you know, play a match. You know what I mean? It's basically like that. And, um, you know, it's crazy to see that us having to learn different button combinations have been dwindled down to somebody who never played a fighting game before. Um, just being able to push one button and to somewhat do what we're able to do. That's crazy. I want to say like the third game, and this game isn't even officially out yet. It's it's still in beta. Um, I want to say Fighting EX Layer. You know the beta is currently out now, and you know it, it, it's a, it's a pretty interesting game. I understand it's still in beta, so I'm not judging it too hard. But um. There are some things in this game that you know are going to be in the full game. And one of those things are, are simplified uh, special moves. Because in a game like that, even when looking back at its predecessor, uh, which was, you know, the uh, Street Fighter EX series, you know, they... Even that game wasn't even easy, you know. And I played Street Fighter EX. I think EX2. And, you know, that game definitely wasn't easy. There wasn't no one-button push combos in that. And I am looking at fighting EX Lair, and they have two different button settings in that game. Well, at least in the beta, which I know they're going to keep for the full game anyway. Like, that's going to be a good selling point. Because again, fighting game companies are looking to shorten that skill gap, as I was speaking to before, as, as I was speaking about before, and they're trying to simplify special moves. Because I know people that can't even throw a, a, a damn fireball in Street Fighter consistent. Like that's a difficult thing for them to do. Now, for guys like me hearing that, that's like hilarious. You know, you can't throw a fireball. That's like the, the, that's literally the most basic motion in fighting game history. You know what I mean? But, you know, like like one of my folks is, uh, you know what I'm saying, like one of my people, like a family member, never plays fighting games like that. He's into sports and things like that, but he can't throw a fireball consistently in Street Fighter for nothing. Like, a dragon punch is hard for the, like, a dragon punch is difficult. Okay, imagine trying to do, like, a difficult combo in Street Fighter. I'm talking about, like, in order to get, like, a full good 30 hits. You know what I mean? Like, a good 30-hit combo. Not from any, any like, critical art or anything like that, but doing something that difficult, right? Just from you pressing the buttons and doing, like, your own custom combo. The, the difficulty of doing that, the skill that requires to do that, the difficulty that is for us... That's the difficulty for him throwing a fireball and doing a dragon punch. You know what I mean? And this is, and I'm only using him as an example to, just to show how wide that skill gap is. Companies have always been trying to shorten that and make that smaller because they know that if more people are able to do things that they normally wouldn't be able to do in a fighting game, if they can make that simpler and easier, make that like less of a burden on them to try to like learn this, which they should do, 
they should learn how to, you know, play this game the way it's intended to be played. Because they're only putting that system in there as a selling point for the non, you know, hardcore people, you know. And uh, it kind of dumbs down this, the, competi the, the competitiveness of the game. Not necessarily their competitiveness, but it, it dumbs down the skill. It makes it that less important to be skillful at a game. And that's never what you want in a fighting game at all. But, again, like I get sidetracked a lot. But Fighting EX Layer, they have two different button settings. They have what's called Classical, which is the you know traditional buttons for a fighting game. Uh, you know, you like you have the, like the 360 motions. You have like the fireball motion into a punch to shoot a fireball. You have like the Z motion. You have you know like the semicircle. You know, what I mean, you have the classic, but uh, you have the classic directional inputs for uh, these moves that would be basic for us. Like this is easy mode stuff for us to do because we already understand the controls from playing other fighting games and understand that you know. In order to activate this move, you have to do it at this type of speed. You know what I mean? All this goes through our mind. Like, this is already programmed in in guys like me and many other people who play games on a competitive level. You know, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of me in 2018 in the tournament scene. Just throwing that out there. World Warriors Collective 2018. Uh, but, um... But, yeah. Uh, and then they also have one that's called Progressive. Where... They simplify the, the special moves and the super moves so much so to where you just have to press like forward and punch and a fireball comes out. You know what I mean? Like that's to, 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 to think about how simplified that that has to be done for some people. It, it's mind blowing. Like maybe because we're only understanding it from our perspective. You know, we don't understand it from like the perspective of, of them because they don't play fighting games like that. They don't even play console games like that so the concept of a fireball is actually kind of difficult for them because they don't understand that you know when you press the directional button right as soon as you're finna come to the end of that direction that's when you press like the attack button that's when you press punch that's when you press kick you know what i mean like they, they don't understand that concept you know and i think we need to be more open and, and teach people about that type of stuff but uh you know because as as simple as that may be for us what's simple for us isn't simple for other people but that's it, you know, and it's crazy how, you know, even playing it on a, you know, it, it's sad when the day comes that somebody that never played a fighting game before in their life can beat somebody that's been playing the series all their life, all, only because they have simple control settings. That's kind of stupid to me, you know, again, and it's based on the common sense of, of business versus the common sense of competition. You know, when you look at it from the common sense of business, their plan is to, their duty is to sell more units, even if it means dumbing down the game. Now, of course, a lot of these fighting games, they have a competitive scene. You know, you have, you know, you have Capcom, they have the Capcom Cup, you have Tekken, you, have, you know, you have the Tekken World Series, uh, you even past tournaments that, you know, you have Evo, you have all these other little, you know, these big tournament scenes, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of one. Uh, uh, like Winter Brawl. Um, uh, Broken Tear. Um, and so on and so forth. You know, and I don't think Dead or Alive had like a simple button combination. Yeah, Dead or Alive has always been like a tricky game, even for me. But I would feel, me being who I am, I would feel bad knowing that I could just one button push my way to to victory. Actually, some characters in Dead or Alive are actually made like that. But that's different from just, you know, you have certain characters that are like beginner level characters versus characters that are immediate level, characters that are expert level. But then you got characters that are basic that people are like good with. You know, there's always going to be characters, especially in fighting games, you're always going to have characters that make the player look good, and then you're going to have char characters that the player makes look good. You know what I mean? Like, to this day, I don't think anybody else played Gen in Street Fighter 4, like, uh, like the way Shen, uh, played Gen. I think he was the only, I think one other person tried to play him, and then that person never existed in the tournament ever, ever again. You know, everybody went to Seth after that, and just copied what the fuck that, fucking, uh, what's that dude name? 
uh, Kunko. I, I hope that's how you pronounce his name. Yeah, when he used Seth, everybody else copied that formula, which is something that other people need to stop, man. But be original. Stop copying other people's strategies. But, uh, but yeah, man, it's for the common sense of business. Their duty is to sell units. At the end of the day, they need to make money. They need to sell units because that really is what's going to determine the success of the game. That's the first part of it. You know, and then you want to satisfy the competitive side. You want to make things challenging. You want to make things interesting. You want to make things, um, you know, like you want to make the skill level of the players that are playing this game seem seem appreciated and the only way that's going to be appreciated if they're doing things that other people can't do but that's up to the develop to the developers to put things in that game that are that aren't easy to do and it takes time to learn if you take time to learn a combo that nobody else can do and you play a character that nobody else plays your respect level is going to be high and that's big for the common sense of competition because that means you know more people are going to come and see you more people are going to be cheering you on because you're using a character that not everybody's going to pick up. You know what I mean? Everybody can play Ryu, not everybody can play Yen. You know what I mean? Like, everybody can play, you know, a Shoto because that's like the most basic fighting game. Those are the most basic fighting game controls of all fighting games and all fighting games. You know, every fighting game has a Shoto because they're trying to pull that audience from Street Fighter. But, you know... A company, if they can make more money by shrinking that skill gap, then of course they're going to do that. Now, of course, you're never going to see the people using the easy mode the controls or like the simplified controls or the, or the easy mode buttons um, or the easy mode settings, let me say, in a game like, you know, or in any tournament because that's, you know, people, it's other things that you just can't teach people. Like you can simplify the controls. You can't simplify uh, being able to know how far you have to be for a character for the special move to hit in the heat of the moment. You know, you can't teach how to be calm in a thick situation where b both you and your opponent are only one hit away from from like winning this tournament or winning this match. And it's that intense. You can't teach calmness during that because some people panic. They start shooting fireballs out their ass like rapidly like, oh my God, and one of these better hit. Just hit, just spam, spam, spam. And then you all of a sudden you teleport over you know, especially in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, I love it when they do that. I love it when they get, you know, uh, panicking and I just use, like, a teleport, get behind them, and I win a match. That's that's always funny. Like, you're doing all this extra stuff, and then all of a sudden I just, you know, a calm mind is always going to beat a mind that is in panic. So, you know, you always got to stay cool. But, you know, to ask this question, I'm asking this question because, I don't know, it's like something about that just doesn't seem right. This easy mode. Like, I understand why it's in there, and I know they're not going to stop, especially when more people are buying games. It's some games that people just can't get behind. Like, for example, like, with games with that's like Street Fighter V. When that first came out, it was very bare bones, and Capcom is just now realizing their mistakes, and they're releasing the arcade edition. Um, in January, 16th, uh, January 16th. Um, and they... Are based on, and they're pretty much trying to correct their mistakes with the initial release of Street Fighter. But then again, that could be also for the common sense of business, because you have companies, and I'm noticing this with a few for a few companies. I'm not going to speak their names because I don't. I'm not cool with them no more. But um, uh, they will purposely release a bland version of their game, make a competitive scene, and then release content, you know, over a period of time to keep people interested and to keep their ear, you know, for, cause forever people have been asking for Sagat in, in, uh, in Street Fighter V. People have been asking for Cody. People were asking for Blanca and there, and, you know, and with the six characters that's coming in the arcade edition of Street Fighter V, you're finally getting those three. You even getting Sakura, you're getting two new characters, G and Falky, and you know, you're getting four, uh, returning characters. So anticipation can also be for the, for the common sense of business as well. You have to, you know, but you have to know when to let go of the pressure of that rubber band so that you can capitalize on it when it's at its peak 
versus just, you know, just giving it to them when people begging for it. Like, for example, so, so let's say that this rubber band right here was, I don't know if you can get a good look at that, was like, represents like the an anticipation, right? The more you pull this rubber band, right, the more anticipation there is for like a certain game. And it's only going to be for so long. I wish I had an actual rubber band. This is like a hair, a hair tie, but it's still going to work. But the more you pull, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. It's a helicopter car. It's a ghetto bird and like two police cars just rolled by something serious going on. But yeah, the more you pull this rubber band um, or this hair tie, that let that represent, uh, be a representation of anticipation. And just about as the rubber band is finna pop, you know, they say, okay, here's the characters that you guys wanted, and boom, you know, imagine if something was in that, you know, the anticipation was in that, and all of a sudden, just slingshots, and it's like, okay, they capitalized on that anticipation. So that can also be the common sense of business. But should, oh, never mind, that's a Chinook, that's, that's, that's a carrier plane, but yeah, um, But, uh, yeah, here's a question I wanted to pose to you guys. And I know it's a 30 minutes, but because I, I, I had a, light to, a lot to cover. But um, should easy mode characters have a damage nerf opposed to, you know, other people who are playing a game with, like, the classic controls? Because I think it's crazy. Like, okay, if, a, if, if an easy mode combo does like a good, you, you know, pretty much does like a 30% damage, and all you're doing is pressing one button versus somebody, excuse me, versus somebody who, um, you know, is actually playing the game, you know, normally. It shouldn't be fair that the person that presses the, the one button easy mode combos get to do the same amount of damage as, you know, because it takes no effort. You know what I mean? Now, of course, I, I doubt this is going to happen. This is just wishful thinking. Uh, I would want it to happen because that'll push people to actually learn the game the way it's supposed to be learned or, you know what I'm saying, like just get lost. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then again, for the common sense of business, that might not be the best thing because they'll return the game. The company loses money. You know, that's a sale that they no longer have. You know what I mean? Like they don't, I don't know. And then I don't think they would want to make two different sets of damage values for the same character. I don't think a company is willing to put in that much effort in a fighting game, you know. No company is 100% about the competition. You know, they all every every company wants to be about business more so than they are about competition. Competition keeps games alive. Hell, people still playing Tetris and on a competitive level. I've seen the Tetris uh, World Championships 2017. They, they serious. First time seeing a Tetris Championships 2. Boy, they was, they was going at each other crazy. But, um, but yeah, uh, it's always going to be, a battle between, you know, between those two ideals, and oftentimes, you know, common sense and a business and common sense of competition, they work together. Because for the sake of the business, what's competitive may be what's best for business. You know, so it's just a thought, man. So that's it, man. You know, my videos are typically this long anyway, especially when I got something heavy to talk about. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Should fighting game companies nerf the damage on easy mode settings? Like, would you like to see that? Like, would that be something interesting? Or would you not like to see that? I, I don't know, you know. What do you guys think? Do you, th I think fighting games have become too beginner friendly and, you know, as much as, as I may appreciate them doing what's best for business, don't kick the, the people to the, to the, that's on the common sense of competition, don't kick them to the side for the sake of that, you know what I mean? Because we're the ones that keep the game alive, you know, even when the game doesn't sell well, so... I don't know. That's just a thought, man. So thank you guys for watching. Peace.